In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at our entire upcoming pattern. We have this deep Arctic air in place here for the eastern and central regions of the United States. We're going to talk about what's going to happen afterwards. Obviously, our major snowstorm and blizzard is all said and done for most areas. The Great Lakes are still experiencing some of that snowfall, which we will take a look at. So let's just take a look at things. Obviously, you can see that I put the temperatures, this is actually the wind chills, on the screen here. Because we're going to just take a look at where the coldest temperatures are at right now, which is a lot of different areas are experiencing very cold temperatures. As we can see when we reach the northwest, I'm actually going to have to turn that off because it's way too distracting. Uh, as we take a look at the northwest here, we see plenty of light to moderate, even heavy rainfall happening, especially here and, and pretty much exclusively here. For the state of Washington, it looks like later on we could see that entering into Oregon as well. Some of the higher elevation areas here in the Cascades are experiencing snowfall as well. As we can see for the Northern Rockies, there is some passing snow showers on this Christmas Eve morning. Uh, as we can see, once we approach the Great Lakes here, we can tell there's totally this rotation here of lake effect snowfall occurring for pretty much all the lakes here and a lot of those coastlines along these lakes. Buffalo has seen one of their worst blizzards of all time from this lake effect snowfall, but as I'm taking a look at it, it looks like things have gone to their north. So we see areas closer to, let's see what some of these towns are called up here. Uh, oh, right near Niagara Falls actually has experienced the worst here of that band there. Again, I've always talked about it, but those blues in the color code here of our radar is going to be whiteout conditions. This is extremely heavy snowfall. The whites are actually very heavy as well. And then the grays is going to be your lighter snowfall. So it has moved north of Buffalo overnight, but they've already experienced such a terrible snowstorm that it's pretty much, you know, going to go down for the history books for them. Um, now, I hope everybody's safe because there was a lot of wind and now there's plenty of cold, obviously, and I've talked about how that's a bad combination. So I hope everybody's uh, doing okay here. We do see there is some snow showers left over there for Maine still from our original snowstorm. And actually... I want to see, did I see some snow showers, yeah, perhaps happening here in states like West Virginia, uh, Ohio as well. It's quite dry as you reach into the eastern seaboard, though. For a lot of these areas, it's certainly cold enough for snow, but obviously not happening at this point. I can see that there is some snow showers near Dallas as well, so some interesting areas seeing some snow showers. Because we are experiencing very, very cold air compared to what's typical. I wanted to check Florida here because I know there's some freezing temperatures in there, so that would be cool to catch some Florida snowfall in the video here. Uh, I'm making today's video a lot earlier, and I'm going to upload it at, you know, probably 1 p.m. like I normally do, so this is going to be pretty outdated by the time you're seeing it, but I wanted to be able to catch some of the coldest temperatures that are around right now, and surely these wind chills are just out of this world. As you can see, negative 20, negative 30, and even I'm seeing some negative 40s there for North Dakota in the wind chill department. And as far south as North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Mississippi, and Alabama, we are seeing some below zero wind chills in here. So some areas that typically, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty intense if it gets below freezing as a high temperature at all. Uh, and these areas are seeing wind chills, again, below zero. I mean, absolutely insane stuff that we're seeing here. And especially as we work our way further south here, uh, this is even more interesting to me, seeing wind chills in the single digits in teens here for the Florida Panhandle and northern Florida there. And then for these areas, these wind chills are below freezing, so 20s, 32. There is far south as Cape Coral, uh, as you can see, uh, let's see some other areas. Uh, yeah, Cape Coral, I would say, is the, the very far southern extent of where we saw those freezing temperatures. As far as the wind chills is concerned, uh, we can see areas here. Uh, pretty far down the east coast of Florida as well. Uh, I think it's Stewart. Yeah, near Stewart, we saw 34, 33. There you go, below freezing in the wind chill department. So very, very frigid temperatures. I wouldn't be surprised if we're seeing, you know, very, very cold temperatures also out here near the Bahamas, Freeport as well uh, in there. So that is just crazy stuff. I guess it would be the equivalent of this. I know they are in the... Um, the Gulf Stream there as well, so they might be a little bit warmer out here, but we can't get the temperatures right now for these areas. I would be very curious to hear how cold it is, though, uh, for the Bahamas, because I never thought about that. In these very extreme Arctic blasts, they do get, obviously, colder temperatures. We can see the, the cold front is actually located right around here, so everywhere north of there is seeing very cold temperatures compared to what they're used to. Uh, very interesting stuff. 
Now, what we're going to do, I've kind of, you know, had a nerd moment over this cold air. So what we're going to do is move on and focus more on the upcoming pattern. Talk about the next 10 days, where we're headed. I will tell you for tomorrow, I'm pre-making tomorrow's video for Christmas Day. So uh, that is going to be a video I'm making today, right after this one, actually. And it's going to be a long-range video. We're going to be talking about the next few months and how winter is looking to shape up. So that's going to be an exciting one as well. But let's move on and talk about the upcoming pattern quickly. All right, now here we are taking a look at our upcoming storminess. I just want to move us towards this evening. And as you can see, it's going to be quieter in the precipitation department. We still have some of that lake effect snowfall occurring up here, some lighter precipitation happening in the northwest. But there is no major storm system anymore taking place by the time we're reaching tonight into tomorrow morning. So that's going to be good news uh, for Christmas morning. Uh, as we can see, as we reach later into Monday, we do start to see more of a minor clipper system moving through the United States. And I'd say in a swath that looks like, well, that's maybe a little little far south, but we could see some precipitation moving through for these areas. It wants to dry up by the time it reaches the coast here. Uh, as you can see, as we play this out, dries up. We do see some snowfall showers happening here in the northeast and the Great Lakes as well. And we kind of get our first major storm system moving into the United States in this upcoming pattern. By the time we're reaching Tuesday the 27th, two days after Christmas, we can see very heavy snowfall there for the Sierra Nevadas and also the northern Rockies with rainfall in our lower elevation regions there and more coastal regions as well. Uh, by the time we're reaching into Wednesday, we can see this spreads out and becomes a full-blown snowstorm for the Cascades and the Rockies, as you can see. Uh, our temperature pattern or jet stream pattern, I guess, is going to be a lot like this. So we see this kind of precipitation heading northward through here, mostly showers, uh, also warm air heading northward up the coast. And then we see the cold air uh, really diving south here for the west. It's actually coming in from the coast more uh, and then moving back up like this. And then we see the warm air doing this. So this is really what we're seeing. And then the jet stream shapes up just like this. All right. Now, we can see that there is more snowfall developing here for the west, as we can see. Still showers and thunderstorms potentially there for the more central eastern regions of the United States. And then as we reach towards Friday here, the 30th, we see kind of all of this combined. We see this Gulf energy plus this stream here uh, mixing in this area. If there was plenty of cold air here, I would say this is a great setup for a northern plains or upper Midwest snowstorm when you have this Gulf air kind of in, uh, inserting itself into the jet stream. Uh, so we have this moisture inserting itself, uh, and then we have this kind of um, western jet stream as well, uh, our main northern jet, bringing in uh, a lot of this precipitation through the west and into the central United States. If this trend's a little bit colder here for the end of December into January, I'd be watching for something to take place there. And actually, as you can see, uh, we do get a bit of a very far northern snowstorm here by the time reaching the morning of December 31st. Also, a lot of storminess down south. Wouldn't be surprised if there is some thunderstorm and severe weather activity, perhaps with that. As we see, it's reaching the coast by the time reaching January 1st. That will be Sunday. Uh, and then it looks like maybe, to me, the cold air is trying to spread a little bit further eastward, getting a little bit flatter with this jet stream. The warm is becoming a little bit more exclusive for the southeast uh, and this could be a sign of a pattern change coming in the first week of January, but that is pretty far out, so we will take it with a grain of salt. Certainly interesting, and we do see our next major storm developing out west again. Snowfall for the Sierra Nevadas, Cascades, Rockies again, but again, take it with a grain of salt. What we're going to do is take a look at the total precipitation. Now, anywhere in the grays, well, let's start with the whites, because there's a few of these areas. Practically no precipitation there in the white. Your grays will be a tenth of an inch or less. Your green's a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blue's half an inch to an inch. Your yellow's an inch to two inches. Red's two to five inches there. And then your brown's five to ten inches of precipitation. So plenty of that happening out west, actually, especially. And it's kind of a big sign of the pattern change that we've seen. Now, as we reach into the snowfall here, the total snowfall, this is a lot for the west and then for the Great Lakes as well. As you can see, very heavy amounts coming in from uh, Lake Erie, especially there for Buffalo in northern regions, north of Buffalo, like Niagara Falls as well. I don't know why I just said that's so weird. Uh, in the grays, dusting, if anything, blues, two to six inches of snowfall, purple, six to 10, pinks, 10 to 20 there, pastel blues are going to be 20 to 35 inches, and then your pastel pinks will be 35 to 48 inches plus. We see some of that happening out there in the west for the Cascades and the Sierra Nevadas. 
All right, now let's take a look at the temperature pattern here. As you can see, brutal cold in place. We already know that. We've been called for that for weeks now, and it finally has happened. By the time I reach about Tuesday afternoon, the 27th here, we're still left with some cold here, but not even as brutal as it is now at all. It's just going to be a little bit unseasonably cold. So that potency dies down really quickly. We can still see very warm air out west, but this is about to change in a big way. Uh, by the time we reach about the 31st here Saturday, we can see very, very warm air in place for the eastern United States. So this is going to be a big swing in the opposite direction. Uh, and actually, over time, what we will see is things are going to cool out west, which is, again, a sign of a negative PNA. So we're going to see an opposite pattern where this warm air is forced into the east like this. And the cold is all heading down through the west. And this warmth is really just mixing in with the with the eastern United States and and the west is just staying cold and blocking that warm from entering in because sometimes what we will see is this type of a thing and then the cold coming through like this um, but it's totally blocking that cold where it's all heading west and this warmth is stuck like this and it's going to take a big cold air mass to shove that warmth out of the way and that's why we kind of get stuck in these stubborn patterns and as you can see all the way through the 8th of January this model calls for warmth in the east and cold in the west but it might just not see a signal that says the pattern is going to change yet and that might happen before the 8th so take it with a grain of salt these models can be a little bit iffy in the long range so we're going to watch it closely day after day to so be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day for the most part outside of the other day when I got sick uh, also be sure to hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we do upload, okay, so you don't miss an upload. Uh, be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.